Welcome to General Chemistry 1 subject. For this video, we're going to discuss atomic structure and chemical formulas. For this topic, we're going to learn what's inside an atom and how to write chemical formulas. What's inside the atom? Atom is the smallest unit of matter that cannot be broken down chemically. It has subatomic particles such as proton, electron, and neutron. In this picture, we have a representation of a helium atom. We have the orbit and the nucleus. The orbit is the outermost part of an atom that contains electrons. That is why it is also called as electron shell. On the other hand, the nucleus Next, we have atomic number and mass number. Atomic number represents the number of protons inside the nucleus and it is represented by the symbol Z. Atomic number also serves as the identity of each element. In this illustration, we have carbon. As you can see, it has 6 as its atomic number. But when it becomes 7, it is not a carbon atom anymore. It becomes a nitrogen atom. Second, we have mass number or atomic mass which indicates the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom and it is represented by the symbol A. To determine the number of subatomic particles of a neutral atom, always remember that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons while the number of neutrons is determined by subtracting the atomic number from the mass number. For this example, we use the periodic table of elements to identify the number of protons and electrons of a neutral carbon, which is 6. Lastly, to identify the number of neutrons, you have to subtract the atomic number of carbon, which is 6, to its mass number, which is 12, and then you'll get 6 as the number of neutrons. Now, let us check comprehension. Look at the illustration on the screen. We have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. As you observe closely, you can say that it has the same number of protons but with different number of neutrons. Do you know what it is? Yes, these are isotopes of carbon. By definition, isotopes are atoms of the same element with different number of neutrons. Next, we have ions. By definition, ion is a charged atom. It is either a cation, a positive ion, or an anion, a negative ion. Cations and anions can be monoatomic ion or a polyatomic ion. When we say monoatomic ions, these are ions that made up of one element. For example, we have a hydrogen ion, which is an example of cation, and oxide, which is an example of an anion. So monoatomic ions bond together to make a binary compound, which is made up of monoatomic cation and a monoatomic anion like barium oxide. For polyatomic ions, these are ions that contain two or more elements with plus or minus charge, like ammonium, sulfate, nitrate, and phosphate ion. On the other hand, a molecule is composed of two or more atoms bound together by a chemical bond. It is either ionic or a covalent bond. On the illustration, you can see that we have different types of molecules. We have monoatomic, diatomic, and polyatomic molecules. Next, we can classify a compound as a ionic compound or a covalent compound. If the compound is ionic, it is composed of a positive ion and a negative ion. 
or we can also say that ionic compounds can be formed by combining metals and non-metals. And if the compound is covalent, it means that there is sharing of electrons between non-metals. For example, hydrogen and oxygen atoms share electrons to form a water molecule. Next, we have three types of chemical formula. First, we have molecular formula. In molecular formula, it shows the actual number of atoms in a molecule. On the other hand, empirical formula only shows the relative number of atoms in a molecule. That is why it is called the simplest formula. And last, the structural formula that shows the location of an atom in a molecule and the number of bonds between them. Here we have examples of empirical, molecular, and structural formula of some compounds. In writing the chemical formula of ionic compounds, don't forget the following. First, know the symbol and charge of the ions. Second, use crisscross rule. And third, simplify the chemical formula. Take note, for polyatomic ions that will be having subscript, you will put parentheses. Let's check comprehension. That's all for today. See you next time.